And I think it's important to understand Jesus, the dynamics. how often do you interact with the police? <laughs> You're just like hardcore showing your power level. What the f- Hello. Oh, where'd you guys come from? Why'd you guys both join? What's up? Ambushing you. Oh, oh yep. f Hold on. It's me, that's right. I brought my lawyer this time. I wanted to talk about those misconceptions about police encounters and what authority police have. Yeah, go and what for rights it. individuals don't have. Misconception number one. Comps have to tell you why you're detained. The reality is cops do not have to tell you why you're detained constitutionally. I should I should mention that this is all constitutional. Extra mm -hmm. protections or requirements may apply on a state or municipal level, or it may be like precinct policy or something like that. But I don't think the station policy is terribly like legally binding, if at all. Pisco, are you? Do you have? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm not sure about the the constitutional requirements for in the moment for any kind of seizure, but I know that um, you have to be after you're arrested, you have to be. Um, presented with your charges, I think formal charges, and arraigned within, I think, 48 hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, an arrest. That's an arrest. We were going to get into that next. The next one was that cops have well, to... Yeah, well, yeah, let's do that one first. So this is the one that we argued about this for a little bit, because I don't understand. So my understanding would be that 99% of the time, if a cop... Wait, Pisco, I'm asking you. Why did you mute your mic, you f***ing cuck? My bad, my bad. Okay, sorry. No, I'm just gonna. I don't know if you stepped <laughs> away. Okay. So let's say that a cop pulls me over... Um, because I'm speeding. Let's say I know I'm speeding, okay? So a cop yes. comes up to my car, and he's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, well, I saw you were speeding. Um, I want to uh, give you a license registration. So I give him that. Let's say that he comes back with a citation. He hands me the citation. And then let's say that he starts asking me more questions. He's like, where were you at last night? Um, you know, what were you up to? Now, at this point, he's giving me my citation. I feel like I have the right to ask him, like, hey, am I being detained? or am I free to go? And it seems to me that the officer has to say something, but I, Supreme was bringing up the example that the officer doesn't have to say anything, but that seems confusing to me because if I'm not being detained, then I have a right to flip him off and leave. But if I am being detained, I need to know that because if I just start driving away, then I'm, I'm literally fleeing like the scene of a, an arrest, it's like resisting arrest or something, I could get fucked. What, what, so, I understand. Yeah, so what, how, what, I, what is that, yeah. I understood Supreme to say that the cops weren't under, and I don't know this, but, um, uh, that the cops were under no obligation to tell you the nature of why they're investigating you or the base or the basis of whatever. Um, the, yeah, I can I can you. understand um, that. Although that seems weird, but I can understand that. But they seem, but yeah, they, I, they have to tell you that you're being detained. Otherwise, how the fuck are you supposed to know you can't? Or oh, I'm sorry, I'm playing guys. I'm not like mad. How are you supposed to know that you're um like free to go if the cop isn't going to say anything? Because if like I said, like if a cop is asking me questions on the street and I don't feel like yeah. asking him. I need to know if I'm being detained or not. Because if I'm not being detained, I can say, tell him to fuck off and I'm walking away. But if I am being detained, well, I have to cooperate while he performs his investigation. That's my understanding yeah, of I, it. So I'm not a lawyer, but my mm -hmm. understanding is... You're um, my lawyer. <laughs> well, until I pass the bar and, and, you know, I'm studying the criminal procedure part of the bar right now. So mm -hmm. you know, my information, I, I'm reading about this stuff, but um, again, I'm, I'm not a criminal defense lawyer. I think that... Um, it, whether or not they tell you that whether or not you're stopped or seized will play into the analysis of whether or not you are in a custodial situation mm -hmm. for purposes of the Fifth Amendment um, Miranda rights. And obviously, I think if you ask them whether or not you can go, um, it might, I don't know if that's constitutional or whether or not it's police policy or state law. Uh, for the most part, I think it's it's practice for, for cops and police officers to tell you whether or not you're stopped, uh, whether or not they can- Deta put it Whether into, you're like, detained, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether or not you're seized for constitutional purposes, mm -hmm. and that would be under a, a quote unquote Terry stop or um, in a full custodial arrest. Yeah. Okay. So I, I otherwise, you wouldn't know. Yeah, because then otherwise, like, not. yeah, because the example the Supreme is giving that I was having trouble with is if the cop the cop doesn't have to answer, he might just say nothing. So like, if I'm like asking oh, a guy, cops like, cops can lie. No, 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 no. I, like, I, if you would I, ask a cop whether you're being detained. Yeah. Am I detained or am I free to go? That the cop might just say oh. nothing. But I don't know what the. F I, I would just so, leave then. Like that. But that seems weird. They okay. would like shoot you in so, the back or. So if you leave, at that point, if the cop is is trying to detain you, I imagine they would say, "Stop! You're not free to go." But well, that's what I'm telling you, you're being detained, right? At that point, because what? Okay, here's what it comes down to. By the way, if this gets like spirited or spicy or whatever, and like we start calling each other dumb fucks, I don't care. Oh. I, have, I have I'm not gonna call you dumb fuck. I just say fuck sometimes, but I don't want you to think I'm like pissed off or whatever. So. No, I don't. I don't think so. I had fun okay. with the last conversation. Yeah, 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 gotcha. But um, 
No, I think what it comes down to is that in, in court, you just have to be able to establish that you reasonably did not feel free to leave. Like if there's body cam footage, for example, and you ask, am I free to go? Then uh, and then they don't say anything and you try to walk away, but they try to stick you with resisting charges or something like that. Then you can try to establish the defense that it's reasonable that I felt free to leave because I asked them if I was and they didn't answer. Yeah, and I can like, understand that. But the issue that I was running into was you made it sound like you can never really know. So you should err on the side of caution. But erring on the side of caution might mean, but that, I think we kind of clear this up. Erring on the side of caution might mean allowing him to perform an investigation that he doesn't need to. You might not be detained. You might be able to go. Well, okay. We're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. And I want to get into that. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, go, okay. We can All go right. forward into that. Okay. But um, I guess, so, like, generally speaking, if a cop has you detained, he will probably tell you if you ask him. He's not just going to, like, stare at you and say nothing. I'm, and then... I'm, fair, I'm very confident that there is no legal requirement constitutionally that a cop ever has to tell you that you are being detained, even if he intends to detain you. I'm not sure about that. That that could be the case. I know that for certain states, like in New York, even to approach you, uh, there's a there's like level one, level two, level three, level four, and mm -hmm. cops need to have like rationales, which you know reduce in difficulty the lower you get down to even approach you and ask investigatory questions. So if if it's not constitutional, there are, and we have to be careful what we're talking about. Are we analyzing whether or not um, they have to tell you for purposes of charging you with like an obstru obstruction kind of offense? Are we analyzing it for purposes of whether or not Miranda attaches to you? And so I think it's important to s sort of get clear what are we talking about? Are we are we doing this to fire the cop? Um, why are we um, asking the question about whether or not the cop needs to tell you the basis? But I'm sure a lot of state and local law probably fills in the gaps so, here that the constitution might. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, when I was reading up on this, um, mm -hmm. I was reading on NOLO. I don't know if that's a, a source that I should, uh, you know, uh, you know, be communicating about or something like that. But apparently um, the New York protection, as I said earlier, like this is, we're speaking constitutionally and extra protections may apply state or city level. Uh, as far as I, I, I was reading, like it's the New York stipulations requirements for police that, that ends up giving people a lot of uh, the misconceptions here uh, nationwide. And I know for uh, I know uh, I'm pretty confident that in like a lot of red states, Alabama and, uh, you know, Georgia, Mississippi and stuff like that, like these these protections are just completely not present. That could be true. And and realize also that a lot of state constitutional protections that'll say very similar things to the Fourth Amendment and the Fifth Amendment um, will be interpreted as more expansive than the, than the constitutional standard in certain states. So we shouldn't be uh, it could be the case that Supreme is correct about whether or not cops have a constitutional obligation to tell you whether or not you're you're under arrest. They'll keep in mind if they keep paying, playing tricks on you and keep lying to you or, or doing whatever, we start to get into areas where there could be due process concerns mm -hmm. if you were to say something, um, if they're like tricking you too much, um, stuff like that with, with um, kind of interrogations mm -hmm. and admissions. Yeah, so, that because so yeah, that's I, when I and again, I'm going to be very careful and to count Dankiel on myself here. But in all of the uh, in all of the interactions that I've seen with cops, when there are cops that are trying to ask questions and you run into those people that are like really strict on like, I know my rights, blah, blah. When somebody asks over and over again, like, am I being detained? Am I being detained? Eventually, the cop are like, you're not. You can leave. And then the person will just leave. And that seems to be the case. Like, I don't think they can like string you along for like whether or not you are actually being detained for the purpose of investigation is my understanding. <laughs> We're gonna get into that, mm -hmm. but um, but uh, okay. We'll just move on to the next the next conception. Cops uh, must read you your Miranda rights when you're being arrested. Do you have the right to remain an attorney? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the misconception. <laughs> the reality is that cops never actually have to read you your Miranda rights. Uh, the only reason that they would read you your Miranda rights is if they intend to question you as part of an investigation and they want to admit uh, the results of that questioning into court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty open and shut. Um, yeah, that's probably Miranda true. Miranda is there for yeah for for questions and any actions by the cops that are meant to elicit some kind of testimony or whatever. In a, yeah, in a but custodial situation. I think most cops will probably read you your Miranda rights because most cops are going to want to ask you questions yeah. generally being arrested. Because <laughs> because people will talk a lot. Yeah, uh, right when they're they getting arrested. You'll volunteer it, and they just want to be able to admit it. Oh yeah, so, yeah. And yeah. if you volunteer, oh, Supreme is absolutely correct. This let's say that you're being arrested, and you're like, oh, okay, I, I killed him. Like that would be not covered by Miranda, mm -hmm. even if um, spontaneous utterance, right? Yeah. Wow, Mutin, are you? He literally Googled that one answer and came in just to sound smart because he's a. Fucking I'm a GTA loser. RP kind of. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm a cop fan. Well no big done. Deal. That's the like exact right term. Yeah, that's right. Spontaneous utterance, even if you invoke 
the um, the Fifth Amendment if you just spontaneously utter something, even after you invoke the Fifth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not covered. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. That makes sense, yeah. Invoking the Fifth Amendment, that's the next one. As soon as they read you your Miranda rights, you can remain silent from, from then on. That's the misconception. The reality is... Uh, and this is this is like a small one, but it's one that I think is important for people to know. The reality is that you have to invoke the Fifth Amendment explicitly. You have to do it verbally or written or something like that. You have to make clear your intent to remain silent. On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Did you say that? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Do you think you've done anything wrong? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Do you understand you can waive your Fifth Amendment right? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. It is, uh, it's your intention to decline all answers to the questions and invoke your Fifth Amendment right? Yes. You can't just stay silent once they read you your rights. Well, I know that when they, I think when they read you your rights, I think you, you have to acknowledge that you've heard them at least. Like, you, there has to be some form of, I don't know if it has to be verbal or if it could be written, but there has to be some sort of, like, the person's acknowledged they've read the rights, whatever, yeah. I don't, I, you don't have to say exactly, like, I invoke the Fifth Amendment, but I'm pretty sure you can say, like, I want to talk to you or I want a lawyer or whatever. And, yeah, it, ha it yeah. has to be unambiguous. And yeah. There's differences in invoking uh, your right um, not to speak and, and invoking the right to counsel. Mm -hmm. um, they actually have different uh, sort of what the police has to do in response to those inquiries. You can like stay silent, but the, the cops don't have to, uh, if, you, if you stay silent, the cops, you haven't invoked the fifth, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you're not gonna like get in trouble if you just stay quiet, but you haven't invoked uh, the fifth. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I think that's true. Okay, uh, go ahead. Or were there questions? No, I think I agree. Okay. And the final Wait, one. Wait, there's a good question in the chat, which is, can your silence be used against you? Um, typically, that question, if like you were trying to present that in a court, it's so prejudicial to be like, well, he stayed quiet, that uh, for the most part, that's that's not going to be allowed. Okay, but I know that like uh, during a police interaction, if you remain silent without invoking your right, they can use that as like resisting or something like that, or or uh, obstruction. Like for example, if they ask you your information. Oh, that's, that's a good point. So mm -hmm. one thing that you may be required and which is not covered, I think, by um, by Miranda or by the Fifth Amendment right to counsel is questions about like bi booking questions, essentially yeah. biographical questions. Mm -hmm. And I think there's even exceptions for like giving your license or your information yeah. to cops if they if they're like basic information. Yeah. And that's not seen as like because it, it's not supposed to be inculpatory to just give statements about who you are as a person yeah okay and the final one and i, I kind of want your insight on this pisco because i suspect that this is the case but i'm not sure i know it's the case that they that police do not necessarily have to tell you why you're being arrested until they present charges to you which they don't have to do until you've been in custody for 48 hours yeah i think that's true but, too we already yeah but um what i'm what i want to know is what if they decide not to charge you then you could probably sue the station, I would imagine, for unlawful that automatically detainment. wrongful arrest. Uh, automatically a wrongful arrest? No, I mean, you, not necessarily. A prosecutor might. There might have been probable cause for your arrest, but then the the cops figure out, oh wait, even though there was probable cause, we're not gonna. We don't want to do this case, or for whatever reason, the evidence doesn't seem tight, or we lost our witness. Um, I don't think it would be a violation for a cop for a prosecutor to decide to drop charges. Well, but they would have to um, tell you why you were being why you were arrested, right? There's no way they can just That's for I'm That would go on the, the I think the cops will have to like fill out forms typically, right? Mm -hmm. Their police reports and I think almost invariably they'll they'll give a basis for the arrest on the whatever even if it's a federal a federal law enforcement, they'll have these intake forms where they'll list the the reason for the arrest. So at some point I think you will get access to at least the purported reason why you were arrested sure uh, and if there isn't something listed i think um there might be some trouble or you can do like uh you can do they'll, they'll probably file the report and you can do a uh, freedom of information act no request. way would you have to do a FOIA request on why you were arrested i can't believe that that has to be available at like a courthouse like the district or whatever has to have like it would i think it would be have to be discoverable if you were like going to trial 
Um, but even even without before trial, there's no way that you should have to oh, yeah. wait for discovery right. or file a FOIA request in order to figure out why you yes, were arrested. That, that, that information, I think, if, if you're going to like a preliminary hearing or something, you're trying to argue that there was no, you know, let's say you're trying to Im impugn, Fosh's favorite word, impugn. Mm. I'm going to impugn your intelligence if you do this again. The um, credibility of yeah. that you were arrested for being officer. black or something, right? Right. Yeah. And um, so I, I think that that information uh, would tend to be a accessible for for your lawyer and stuff. if you wanted to go to trial but but i guess at this point we're or in a preliminary hearing right or if, if let's say that you want to get that so a judge will typically it depends on the state but oftentimes before you even decide to have a trial the judge will will have a hearing where they'll be like there was probable cause for this arrest and that'll be a hearing where your where your lawyer is allowed to go there um, and argue essentially why or why not there was well, probable cause. Well, even it. independent of any hearing, I, what I would imagine is I should be able to go down to the, if I was arrested and then they let me go after 12 hours and they're like, sorry, I should, I feel like I should be able to go to the police station. Like, Hey, I want like an arrest report or something. Why the fuck was I arrested for 12 hours? Like they, they must have something that they should provide you. Otherwise it seems like you're, it's like an automatic lawsuit. Like the person would have to just sue it. No, the idea that that That's information right, would only yeah. be discoverable, like in discovery or something. That seems crazy to me. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I doubt that. I'm sure those things are available. Mad um, tips, where are you at, motherfucker? Yeah. It, I'm sure it depends on jurisdiction, like how they do it mm -hmm. on the jurisdiction as well. I'm, I'm not actually sure whether there's a constitutional requirement to know the basis of your arrest, but I'm sure it's it's practicing. And there, there may be good reasons why they wouldn't release that info to you because it may oh. contain... Go ahead. Yeah, okay, so th th there can be, I think, there can be sealed information Um but then I think they would have to provide it to you privately, at least, or something. I, if you've already been arrested, oof. There might be it, some, like, due process concerns of, like, not knowing the basis of your arrest before you're, you know, uh, before you go to trial. This is, what sure. this is what I'm interested in, is, like, the legal requirements, right? Like, I, I understand that it's good practice. And listen, I think a lot of people looking through the chat were really eager to place me on a scoreboard for whether I'm ACAB or some shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I, I'm not here to proselytize that cops have too much power or any of that shit. Mm -hmm. I think cops are human beings. I think they have a hard job. I think they're necessary. Uh, I, I am only interested in relaying this information because I think it's useful for individuals because a police interaction is a thing that any individual can reasonably expect to have in the next week or so. And I think it's important to understand Jesus, the dynamics. how often do you interact with the police? <laughs> Jokes on you, bitch. I don't go outside. Wait, what? Well, you're just like hardcore showing your power level. What the fuck? I, you know, personally, I don't. Uh, but you know, I, I don't you know, I stay inside. It's been COVID. But uh -huh. and again, you speak to an audience of thousands and you know Oh, somebody could uh, have an interaction. Okay, yeah, sure. All right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. You can reasonably expect that somebody in your audience will get pulled over or or something like that, right? Uh -huh. Like within especially with the world opening up. I just think it's important for people to know what authorities police have because, you know, I watch a lot of interactions mm -hmm. and I see a lot of dumb fucks try to lawyer their way out of stops, you know, traffic stops and whatnot. Um and I, you know, it, it's because they don't Stop understand. They don't understand how, how few rights they have and what authorities police have. And, you know, again, not here to proselytize that police have too much authority and that people have too few rights. That's not, I'm, I'm so far from being able to, It feels to know. me like in the overwhelming amount of stops, though, people don't realize how many rights they have. It seems like it goes too far in the other direction. Unless you're running into, like, one of those sovereign citizen dudes. I think most people give up way more I than I was they about have to ask you about that, uh, Destiny. Um, so, so one is, I, I think I agree with you, Destiny, that people will talk way too mm -hmm. soon and, yes. without realizing that. And they, people don't, they don't realize it, like, a cop doesn't, a cop... Here's a legal advice, okay, as a lawyer. <laughs> oh, you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but just go. A cop yeah, yeah. never has to fucking ask you to search your car. If he has a reason to do it, he is going to fucking do it. If he's asking you, he's either being polite and he's going to do it anyway, or he's asking because he doesn't have a reason to do it and he can't unless you say yes. And he wants well, to wait, wait a second. Is wait, that wait, not wait, true? Wait, wait. Uh, so I, I'm, they could always ask you for consent. They don't mm -hmm. even need a probable cause for consent, let yeah. alone a warrant. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but oftentimes... Um, I don't know what police practice is, but I can I can see a, a world in which they would they might ask anyway, um, just because consent is such a powerful powerful way to like get beyond everything with respect to like exceptions to the warrant requirement yeah. and exceptions to probable cause. But I would I would agree with you that you should always 
not give consent if you if you don't want yeah, to. Yeah, there's literally no reason to. If they have a warrant, yeah. they don't give a fuck what you say. They're going to search anyway. Yeah. And if they no don't have a warrant, I think you have to. Yeah, well, because and because people generally, if they feel like they're innocent or if they feel like it'll help, they want to volunteer information. They want to be nice. They want to help. They want to do whatever, right? Or they feel threatened by you know the threat of going to jail or getting sure. a ticket, yeah. and so they'll they'll over uh, they'll what do you call it? They'll like over liaise with themselves. Yeah. How so, many of the videos that I watch of Destiny watching? What are those? The JCS, JSC. Oh yeah. yeah. It, it's like people just talking, talking, Dude, talking. They, oh some God. of these entire investigations are built in the interrogation room. That is oh crazy to me. No, I mean yeah. I guess it's good because they're catching murderers and shit. But these people yeah. will go from like no invest, no like actual like on the ground like field investigation. It's like everything comes out in the room and then it's over. And it's like <laughs> they have everything from fucking from from motive to the location of the body to how everything how, like everything is established through like three conversations. That's crazy. I suspect to me. that I suspect that they are. Already have like more than enough corroborating evidence. No, to that's the inter I understand why you would say that, and that's what I would have assumed. But before watching some of these videos, fuck, I wish I could remember some things. But on a lot of these, they don't. On a lot of these, they literally have nothing. That's why. Do you remember the cases? I I've seen all the JCS videos. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, then yeah. I mean, we've seen, fuck. Well, we could go back. I'd have to. Look. I don't remember the names very well. But like, because I remember, I I say at the end of some of these where I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. they literally had nothing, and they built. Oh. Um, hold on. Okay, let me see if I can remember it. So, Stephanie Lazarus was the woman that killed her husband like 23 years ago, right? Did they have uh, anything? Or her ex-boyfriend. Her ex-boyfriend yeah. or something, yeah. Did they have anything yeah. on her? Yeah, they had the DNA stuff off of her cup, remember? They had the, the DNA. Oh, they were looking for the her. intent on her then. That's true. Okay, let me see yeah. what else. Um, did they have anything for Chris Watts? Um, they had the video of him backing his truck in. and That was uh, weird. I and remember that case. They did, but I, did they the have neighbor. anything else besides that? You know, yeah, I guess, yeah. He needed them to tell, yeah. He, he was, needed everything. That's he, a really good example. Yeah, he gave he the really body and everything. Skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there was yeah, that, that one. Was oh, the Jennifer girl? Now, the dad did wake up. But no, like, they had text messages. They had the burner phones. They already knew. They knew everything. Oh, they did catch the burner phones on that. True, I think. I'm pretty sure they did, right? I think they had the burner phones after about a month after the first interrogation, but by that second interrogation where they moved rooms, mm -hmm. um, they had the burner oh, phones. Oh, possibly, yeah. It might be that um, Casey Anthony probably didn't get convicted because she didn't say anything, so she could like deny. Right? It's so powerful when in, in court when they use your own statements against you mm -hmm. because your own statements are, if you're the opposing party to the prosecutor, mm -hmm. is an exception to the hearsay rule. Uh, that can be used to impeach you and as substantive evidence like it holy crap it is so and you can't use your own good statements out of court to help you, you. Steven. Mm -hmm. it can only be used because then it's hearsay to, it, it can only be used against you and so that's why um i think a lot of criminal defense lawyers um th they will rue the day when their clients uh, or their prospective clients talk to uh, the, the police because it, it's just so damaging mm -hmm. okay. i wanted to ask go ahead, go ahead please I was going to ask you, Destiny, I'm glad you brought up the um, oh, Sovereign Citizen videos vis-a-vis yeah. -vis what we talked about the other day with the Taser video. Mm -hmm. In those videos, buddy, don't you think that the cops are so freaking patient oh, with the Sovereign God. Citizens? I think they that in a, lot in, the of, car. in a lot of videos, cops are really patient, I think. Yeah, yeah, they are. And, and don't you think that's the best practice? Like in so many of those videos, how many warnings do the cops give to the... The guy, like, I'm going to break your window. You have to get yeah, out. Yeah, but the you only problem is out. I see videos where the cops aren't patient, and then they get fucking executed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we're going gonna to get into that, too. I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you just, think their conduct should be on, like, the basis of... I, I understand they're horrible cases, but they're edge cases, aren't they? Um, the, the cop ambush cases? Yeah, so I'm going to make this comparable, okay? The chances of you getting raped when you go out on a Tinder date as a woman are pretty low, Okay. But now if somebody said like the chances are like 1% or 2%, the fact that that chance exists like changes every single interaction you have, right? So I would like compare the that to- The impact is high. The impact is extreme. Yeah, and so I would compare that to a cop, right? Where it's like, chances are most cops are never gonna be in a fucking life or death situation. But if there's a chance, man, because when it happens, you don't see it coming and it's just boom, boom, boom. Um, how, yeah. remote, how, how remote would the chance have to be for for you to reject that frame of looking at the problem. I like suppose that it only happened one time in the history of cops. 
Would you still say that? I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with like a cop necessarily being like, I guess I shouldn't be rude or whatever. I think it just, I think it depends. Um, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna come away being on the much shorter end of like how patient somebody should be, but I just have low patience for people acting like dipshits and I have almost no sympathy for people to do it. So, I mean, I don't know. So in those sovereign citizens videos, you think they ask once, they don't comply, they ask twice, don't comply, break the window, tase them? Yeah, fuck it. Hell yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, fuck them, right, dude. Consistent. You have a cop that's standing there telling you to do shit. What the fuck do you think is gonna happen? Like you need to learn some shit in life at that point. Uh, go to New York and deal with those cops, okay? Because they don't fuck you up. If you do some dumb shit like that, you're gonna sit there and argue with a cop for fucking for for fifteen minutes in your fucking window. They got better shit to do, or they don't. The better shit they have to do is gonna be kicking your ass, probably. Like I, I don't know. I just think it's. Too, I don't know what you expect to happen. Like, okay. Or at the very least, are consistent. So, the the, the cops who are patient. Um, have you ever seen this video of like a couple guys? They're like carrying their guns in protest of or something. Or they're they're. I think I probably know. Me. And then the cop shows them his MP5 in the back seat and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of that situation? Isn't that like the right style of policing? I understand in that case, like they're that. Not doing yeah, that style is perfect. However. Yeah. Um, I think that cop did everything correct though. He that that cop that guy had the perfect balance of like friendly but firm. And it's really hard to strike that balance. That's why most most cops come off as like dicks, because they're just like power tripping assholes. But I think that cop was incredibly respectful, very polite, but like very like to the point. Like, am I being detained? Yeah, you are. I need to perform an investigation, make sure your weapon is legal, blah blah blah. And then and then boom, boom, boom. That guy, yeah, that guy handled that perfectly, I think. Yeah. Am I being detained? Yeah. Okay, well I'm... spread your arm out, please, like this. Both of them straight out. Excellent. Go ahead and turn away from me for a second. Excellent. But you know, I don't consent to any search and seizures. I understand that. I'm not seizing anything. I'm going to well, However, that's easy for us to say because those kids were being like super cooperative. They were like chilling and they were like just chatting and yeah. And there's a lot of discretion that goes into police work. So the cop could probably, I'm sure he like sizes these kids up half before he even gets up to them. Just how they look, what they're doing and everything, right? What do you mean by that? As in, like, cops probably make a lot of value judgments in terms of, like, the types of people that they interact with and the situations that they're in. So, like, if you see, like, two kids that look like nerds walking up and down the streets with rifles on their back, like, the chance that these guys are about to be terrorists is probably low when he approaches them and starts talking to them and they start communicating back. It's probably not going to shoot it right. I, now, I'm not saying that's, like, a hard rule for all of this, but it all probably, like, factors into how a cop evaluates a situation. Well, okay, tandem to that, their mm -hmm. discretion is like the basis of their authority often. So that's why that's, you know, that's why that's important. Sure. Like the authority that they have to conduct a stop, detain you, arrest you, search your car is based on their discretion. Um, or conduct, well, or conduct a search. Now, here's where I think we're going to like, uh, here's where this conversation gets confusing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about authority as if they will be cleared in court as, as all of these interactions being lawful. Um, but that has, that's all after the fact, right? That's all post hoc. That all has to be established in court, which mm -hmm. is why... You know, my uh, my advice to people is to not volunteer any more information than you need to, often more than uh, just your information. Always express uh, your refusal of consent for searches and seizures of all kind, including of your person. If you're being arrested, don't, you know, make it explicit that you don't consent to that. If they want to search your car, make it explicit that you don't consent. But a cop may go ahead and just say, listen, I have the authority to do this. I'm going to do it. Sure. And, you know, you know. Um, it may be the case where wherever you are in the United States that a cop can detain you, arrest you for two days, not charge you, never read you your rights, and be have all those actions found to be lawful, which is why you shouldn't physically resist for your own like personal safety. Yeah, I don't think I would one ever disagree problems, with any of that. Yeah. Well, I think one of the problems of um of of policing and and regulating conduct of of police officers is precisely because okay. the remedy for illegal action is very narrow. So um. Usually, your remedy for a cop doing an illegal search or illegally questioning you or something is you get to exclude that evidence in like a future trial, mm -hmm. and that's it, pretty much. Um, and even then, there's like a ton of exceptions for cops. Good faith exception. If it doesn't like have an impact on the trial, maybe we won't let we we'll, we'll let it in anyway. Mm -hmm. Tons of exceptions there, and of course, they have qualified immunity as a defense in uh, in civil cases. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like cops have a lot of tools to protect themselves after the fact. Um, and sure. we have not so many tools to protect ourselves in the moment, which I guess is the is how you have to have a workable society. Otherwise, you'd have people fighting cops every time they made their own judgments about what's 
legal and illegal, but I, I just don't want to go all the way and say, and always give the benefit of the doubts to the cop in real time. Oh, of course not. Well, it. I guess it depends on what you mean when you say that. I mean, like in the, I keep thinking about the taser case and and how often- well, When you say the, who, like, you, like yeah. me or like the person being like confronted by the cop? Cause you kind of have to defer to the cop in every single time, right? Correct, but I, what I mean to say is when these stories come out mm -hmm. about interactions with cops, I take, just like you take very loosely, the Twitter cuts that you see on uh, on Twitter, mm -hmm. where it's cut and it starts at a, at a place that you think is um, misleading, mm -hmm. I take at face value the cop's own self-serving statements. About oh yeah, of course. Racism, yeah. Right? We've got body cam footage of people like planting drugs and showing on people and whatnot, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Is that it, Supreme? Are we that's that's really all, all I wanted to get through. And everything I can claim to know about uh, about these interactions, I get from a channel. In case you're looking for content after JCS, yeah, a channel called Audit the Audit, which does like it's just nonstop police interactions. And the channel gives like letter grades to the cops and the, and the uh, civilians in the interactions, mm -hmm. and they tend to err uh, against the cops. They tend to be quite critical of the police. So I don't know. It might be fun content for you. Might come away with uh, some more insight. But if anybody feels any kind of uh, has any extreme position on cops, whether they are, uh, you know, thin blue line people or ACAB people, mm -hmm. watching Audit the Audit will cure you of your extreme position because there's a lot of civilians who act like dumb fucks. Uh, and I, I mean, I got a really clear picture mm -hmm. on the fact that like, even when even when people are completely in the wrong, uh, they'll, they'll just do whatever they can to wiggle out of a ticket yep. to the point of being completely belligerent. You know, I, mm -hmm. I've learned to, uh, you know, to sympathize with cops quite a bit from watching that channel. And sure. there's a lot of cops being dumb fucks too. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Did you say that you have the right to be an attorney?